What's going on, backpackers? My name is Dan, and today I'm going to talk about my camp pillow journey. I have tried many a camp pillow to find one that works for me, and I think I found one. I think. So I would like to share with you my pillow transitions throughout the years, including what I started off with, what I kind of bought in between, and what I use now, and my thoughts on each of those. I should state a very important piece of information. I am a side sleeper. As much as I've tried, I just can't sleep on my back. Can't do it! And the fact that I'm a side sleeper has pretty much controlled all the pillows that I've looked into throughout the years, and you'll see what I mean as we get into them. So, when I first got into backpacking, like many backpackers, I just used a stuff sack filled with clothes. And I used that for one trip. One trip only, in fact. It was on my very first backpacking trip. And I decided, ah ah, this ain't for me. It might work for some of you, especially all you wonderful lucky back sleepers out there. I'm a little jealous, just a little. So I started looking into actual camp pillows. And the first one that I picked up is this one from Cocoon. It's, uh, they think they just call it the, like a sleeping bag hood pillow. It is, uh, is in the shape where you can fit it into your sleeping bag hood nice and easily. I, I kind of picked this up by accident. I didn't mean to get this exact one because I don't use a sleeping bag. I use a quilt. Um, but I liked it, so I just kept it. So this is an air core type pillow, meaning that it has a, a plastic bladder on the inside, which you inflate with this little valve. And it does also have a little bit, just a little bit, of um, uh, synthetic insulation. So you can see that, see that here? Just a little bit of synthetic insulation on both sides, and it helps to give it just a little bit of extra cushion. It doesn't really do much because it's so thin, but at least in theory, it helps. And then on one side, there is nylon, and on the other, it has fleece, which I really like. And this weighs around three ounces or so, so the weight penalty is not much at all. Now, I use this pillow for quite some time, and overall, I do think it's a pretty great pillow, but there's one problem with it. And that goes back to the fact that I'm a side sleeper. So I pretty much sleep just like this. And even though that air core on the inside, it feels nice and soft when you just kind of squeeze it, once you put your head on it, it's completely compressed. And it's actually kind of hard. So once you push down, I mean, you can feel it's fairly hard. And like most people, I'm used to sleeping on a really soft, comfortable pillow at home. So once I go backpacking and I put my head against something that's a lot harder, I found that eventually my ear would just really, really hurt from sleeping on this thing all night long. So I'd be tossing and turning and trying to get comfortable, but my ear would just really, really hurt. And you know what? Maybe I'm being like the princess and the pea. Maybe I'm making a big deal out of this, but you know what? I just could not get a good night's sleep because of that ear pain. So I started to look at some other pillows that might be a little bit better. And the second one that I picked up was this Exped pillow pump. So I was pretty excited about this pillow because I do use Exped sleeping pads and I always use a pump to inflate my pads, as should you. So this thing caught my eye because it's kind of a, a hybrid type of a air core design pillow. So it does have foam on the inside of it. And, and this is how, uh, how inflated it is, how thick it is, uh, just with the foam itself. This is, I did not put any extra air in this thing at all. Um, so it's, it's pretty thick, but it does compress down um, pretty, pretty flat. So you can't really just use this thing just by itself, especially if you're a side sleeper, um, just, just with the foam because it compresses too much. Uh, but what's cool about this is you use this, uh, this little schnozzle on the end to uh, put that onto your X-Ped pad and then you put your hand over, the, over this hole and then you just push down and inflate. And as you keep pumping, eventually your pad will inflate fully. And weight-wise, this is a little heavier than that AirCore pillow. It's about five, five and a half ounces, something like that. But it's not too bad considering the fact that you're also getting a sleeping pad pump. And to use this in pillow mode, all you have to do is lock these two air valves. So do the one on the bottom first, and then it helps to put a little bit of extra air in here if you want, depending on what you, uh, what you want to do comfort-wise. So put some air in there, lock this one, and now it won't, uh, it won't compress nearly as much when you have those, uh, 
those valves lock. Comfort wise, I did find this to be more comfortable than just using a straight up air core pillow like this cocoon. And I would attribute that really to the fact that this uses both air and foam together. Although to be honest, once you do have the valves closed and using this as a pillow, it's kind of like 80% air and 20% foam as far as how the pillow is supported. And unfortunately, because of that, I did find that it still ultimately hurt my ear as I was sleeping on it all night long. So this just didn't end up working for me. And I really wanted this thing to work because it was so awesome to have both a, a pump and a pillow together, but unfortunately just couldn't do it. So for my next and final pillow, I started researching pillows that got completely away from using any type of an air core. And I landed on the Thermarest compressible pillow. Now this thing actually uses some foam pieces that are left over from Thermarest's uh, self-inflating pads. So it has actual foam on the inside of it. It does not use any type of uh, an air core uh, bladder design at all. So it's completely foam. And this is how thick it is when it's fully lofted. Now Thermarest says uh, four inches, but I don't think they're giving themselves enough credit there because when I measure, it says something more like, I don't know, I'd call that five and a half inches. What do you say, five and a half? I think it's five and a half. Now, of course, when you go to put your head on it, it does compress quite a lot, but not so much that it's uncomfortable for side sleepers like me. And the material is a, a brushed polyester. It's very soft, very comfortable. It doesn't really get too, uh, get too hot and sweaty. It's, it's perfect, perfect for a camp pillow. Now, the one big trade-off for this pillow is the weight and the bulk. This is a size small and it weighs seven ounces, which is definitely fairly heavy for a camp pillow. And it does get heavier from there the larger you go in size. They make a medium, large, so on and so forth. Now the different size pillows all have the same thickness. They're just larger in terms of their length and width, which quite honestly, I'm not quite sure why anyone would need a pillow that's larger than this thing. I mean, come on, how big of a head do you have? As far as the bulk when it's compressed, so all you have to do is roll it up, just roll it up and try to compress it as best as you can. And then it has this little piece of extra fabric that serves as a pocket. So you roll it up into that pocket. At least you do in theory, <laughs> because this thing has so much loft to it, it is kind of tough. So roll it up and then it has this little a little toggle, this uh, little cord lock. Just pull the cord and then lock it. So this is the size fully compressed into its pocket. And like I said before, by no means the smallest pillow in terms of bulk. You know, it just as a as a comparison. Here's the the Aircore pillow compared to the Thermarest, and here is the um, the Exped pillow pump. So yeah, certainly a difference there. But onto the one thing that actually matters about pillows. Is it comfortable? Well, I would definitely say yes. I have had no ear pain whatsoever with this pillow. So Eureka, I finally found one. And the other thing that I like about this is it just kind of acts more like a normal pillow you would have at home. You know, I could kind of scrunch it up if I want some extra thickness or turn it over onto the other cool side of the pillow. How awesome is that? And even though this thing is much heavier than an ultralight camp pillow, I think the, uh, the, the Shill Brothers, um, if you haven't checked out their channel, check them out. It's SBO Outdoors, uh, Shill Brothers Outdoors. I think they said it best when they were talking about sleeping and they said to invest in your sleep. And I could not agree more. There is nothing worse than getting a horrible night's sleep in the backcountry and then having to go hiking for 12, 15, 20 miles the next day. And investing in your sleep might mean spending some money on something new, or in my case, not only spending some money, but also taking a weight penalty and getting a pillow that is heavier than what I brought before. Well, that about does it for my pillow journey. Thank you for following along. And as always, stick around for a few bloopers. If you have not already done so, consider clicking that subscribe button if you want to see me talk about more backpacking stuff. And of course, 
Have fun out there. I'm kind of lost. What did I just say? Where am I? Where am I? Um, especially for you wonderful back, 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 back. So, the f there's a uh, certainly, ugh, and it will, no, you don't, that's not what you do. That's not what you do at all. And felt on the other, not felt, it's not felt, what is it? Fleece. And maybe I'm, where are we? Where are we? How do I explain this? Well, that a, try not to hit the camera this time. Everything that I've said so far has just been wrong. It's not what I want to say at all. I'm just going to start over.